When we see other plant roots growing in our soil, we often assume that they're taking nutrients from our crops. But is this actually happening? Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Seabrook from Learning From Nature. So at the market garden I used to work at, weeding was a number one job, number one priority. And we wanted to make sure that we weeded out all of the roots. Um, and that was to reduce competition so our crops would thrive and I did this in my home garden as well. It's what you do. Yeah, people are always saying that about, um, I've got sweet potatoes growing underneath my, my bananas. Mm, yeah. um, you know, an interesting thing in Australia, um, a lot of people are concerned about eucalypt trees and competition, the root competition there. And, and yet we've got people who are got, using syntropic farming and they're actually including eucalypt trees in their design, in the agroforestry design. So, so you know, are we correct? you know, to always assume that, that when we see different roots in our soil that they're competing. Let's look at a practical example. And, um, and bamboo is a great one because it's so big. And to be honest, every time um, I show people this area of my orchard, people go, oh my God, that bamboo, it must be competing for all your nutrients, for your fruit trees. To a certain extent, there's, there's um, competition for light, and you can see like this grapefruit tree, see how it's the shape that it's growing at? You can see that it's growing more towards the light. You can see here that there's lots of bamboo roots in the soil. But what I've noticed over time is that the conditions are actually getting better. So let's have a look at the soil. Would have been great if I had taken a photo of the soil as it was, um, but I do remember what it was like because I dug so many holes. And so what I've done is I've taken a, a soil sample from that, that I, I can find that is the nearest sort of possible. They're both very dark, um, partly because it's, it's wet. But what I want to point out is, see the orange color here in the soil here compared to here. So, when, when I originally started planting things in this area of the orchard, this red, ready soil was really apparent. Whereas if you look at what was happening now with the soil, look at all the roots and also look at how, it is, how well it breaks apart. So we've got tons of aggregates in here. We've got lots of organic matter and that's that brown color, lots of roots and see how far the top soil is going down. That's happened because of the, the bamboo and the other, the other plants that I've been planting in this, this area of the orchard. So, so what are the benefits of having this soil? I mean, obviously a deeper topsoil, but also it means because we've got this aggregate structure, we've got organic matter, so we've got better water infiltration into the soil, we've got better water storage, we're going to get less water logging, we've got more, sort of more recycling as well. Um, and, you know, it, I think one of the important things we need to, to, to think about is that even though the bamboo is taking nutrients from the soil, it's also giving nutrients back to the soil. That's the opposite to what I would have expected. So that brings us back to the science, but particularly the science about soil ecosystems. And you might think, oh my God, that sounds really complicated. But really, it's not that complicated if we use the experts and if we think about the experts. And so the soil organisms are the ones that are doing all of the work in the soil. They're the ones who are building the good soil structure. They're the ones who are breaking it down. We call it breaking down and decomposing. But basically, they're eating all of the plant material, all of the leaf litter, the root exudates, and, and the, the decaying root tissues as well and they're using them as, as a food resource and then that is what enables them to build that aggregate structure, to, to, to build that organic matter and, um, and, and to recycle the plant nutrients and feed them back to, to um, our, our crops for reuse. And of course also we know increasingly that there's so much competition now happening mm. between the soil organisms and the, and the plants. So if we look at the height of this bamboo and look at the numbers of solar panels that are growing there and we think each of those leaves through photosynthesis is using that sunlight to create sugars and carbohydrates basically. We, we, we have a multi-layered 
production line mm. for all that sugars, which is then the bamboo is, is putting, oh, you know, most plants people, scientists talk about between 30 and 60 percent of the sugars that are produced by plants back into the soil to feed the soil organisms. And so I think that's why we've got more root tissues, we've got more root exudates, we've got a whole lot of organic matter dropping down um, from the leaves mm. onto the soil here. And, and combined with, with starting to get a lot more momentum, a lot more, as I mentioned earlier, planting a lot more cassava, mother of cacao, bananas, and using them as a, as a, a for the plant biomass and roots as well, yep. we're starting to see an improvement on, in the soil. Right. Okay, so potentially having more roots in my soil means that you are having more nutrients recycled and you have a better soil structure because you're providing more food for your soil organisms. Exactly, exactly. And if you'd like to know more about the, the science behind this approach to, this ecological approach to improving soil, um, do have a look at this next video.